Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin Bauman and I'm the coordinator of academic service learning at UW-Superior. I'm excited to be reading a story to you all today. I'm going to read a story called Fiona's Luck by Teresa Bateman and it's illustrated by Kelly Murphy. This is a really exciting story about a girl named Fiona, the country of Ireland and leprechauns. Now we're gonna use our imagination as we imagine what the pictures look like, okay? Once, luck was as free to be had in Ireland as sunlight and just as plentiful. It filled the air and anyone could grab a handful of it as the need arose. This was largely due to the leprechauns for they made luck like cows make milk. Then the big folk arrived in Ireland. They were so large, the luck clung to them wherever they went. Something will have to be done, the king of the leprechauns declared. We can't have those huge people soaking up all of our luck. What would be left for us? So under the king's orders, the leprechauns wove gold and thread into magical nets. Then late one night, one Midsummer's Eve, when the luck was at its height, they swept it all up and stored it in an oak chest by the king's throne so he could distribute the luck when and where he chose. But the leprechauns had been too thorough. They not only scooped up all of the leprechaun luck, but any other luck that had been floating about as well. The land of Ireland fell into a time of great misfortune. Hens gave no eggs and cows would not let down their milk and the potatoes rotted in the ground. Now it happened that in Ireland, there lived a woman named Fiona. She knew the, luck, the, the lack of luck had to be the work of leprechauns. So it followed that, that they alone could restore the good fortune to Ireland. But getting luck back from a leprechaun would be like squeezing water from a stone. Not that it can't be done, but it usually requires more strength than you're apt to have. Sometimes cleverness though is worth more than strength. So, Fiona took her last coins and used them to buy a cow and some chickens. Then every morning and every evening, she would take that cow into the barn. When she emerged, she would be carrying two buckets slopping over with whiteness. Ah, she's a fine cow, Fiona would say to anyone who asked. I'm lucky to have her. Soon the rumors began. While others were short on luck, Fiona had pails of luck. Every morning, Fiona would go into the chicken coop and emerge with her covered ba basket bulging with curves. Ah, the hens seem contented, she commented to her neighbors. I am so lucky to have them. Soon, the rumor spread further. While others were short on luck, Fiona had baskets of it. Then, Fiona began digging in her garden and filling her wheelbarrow with round dirt covered lumps. Oh, it's a good year for potatoes, Fiona said to all who passed. Still, I'm lucky to have what I have. Now, the rumors had wings. While others were short on luck, Fiona had wheelbarrows of it. Naturally, Word spread of this unexpected luck and made its way to the leprechaun king. One day, Fiona was rock walking across a green meadow when she suddenly found herself surrounded by, a small, surrounded by a small crowd of fair folk. In a, in a thrice, they grasped the hem of her skirt and ran her around in a circle. She turned to keep the skirt from wrapping around her knees. And as she turned, the landscape changed and blurred. And when it sharpened again, Fiona, Fiona found herself beneath the earth in the throne room of the Leprechaun King. It was 
a glorious cavern with rich tapestries hanging against the tall granite walls and the floor cobbled entirely of jewels. Torches and candlelight made everything sparkle and music filled the air. In front of the Fiona stood the throne and on the throne sat the leprechaun king. He beckoned to her. Fiona approached, her eyes scanning the room for the missing luck. She was as sure as smoke loves fire that the king would be keeping it close to himself. As she curtsied, she spied the oak chest. It was glowing slightly, sealed by a spell, since everyone knows that no, no lock can keep luck out for long. What would you be wanting of me? Fiona asked politely. The king scowled. Where are you getting all your luck? Who's been giving it to you and why? He demanded. Fiona's eyes widen in innocence. I have no luck, she declared. Indeed, here I am, a captive of the leprechauns. If that's luck, you can take it. So you claim you have no luck? The king inquired, raising an eyebrow. Well, let's put it to a test. And when I prove that you have lied to me, as forfeit, I'll take all the luck you have and put it with the rest that I guard. His eyes flickered over to the chest. Fiona frowned. That's a sorry bargain for me, she said, yet I know the rules. If a test is to be made, then a forfeit must be paid by the loser. I haven't lied, so when I'm proved truthful, I demand a wish as your forfeit. The king's eyes turned shrewd. Agreed, he said slyly. I'll give you a wish for exactly the value of the luck you have if my tests prove me wrong. Fiona knew she was being cheated. A woman with wit, though, can turn even a leprechaun's cleverness against himself. She glanced at the chest and then barely keeping a smile from her lips, nodded. So the agreement was made. At the king's gesture, one of his magicians brought out a low table and placed upon it three beautiful shells. Under one, he hid a small gold coin. Then he whisked the shells around and over and under in a blur no human eye could follow. Now, said the king, where's the gold? There was one chance in three of her picking the right shell and a person with good luck would find the gold every time. Even a person with a little luck would find the gold occasionally. But though they played the game over and over, Fiona could never locate the coin. It was as if she had no luck at all. Another test, the king ordered. A leprechaun harp was brought forward. Now, leprechaun instruments make music by the luck of the player. A person with good luck would be able to play something just by stroking the strings. Even a person with a hint of luck could probably figure out a single melody, but in Fiona's hands, the strings went out of tune and no matter how she stroked and plucked, nothing but ear bending noise resulted. The king shuddered and frowned. Could he have been mistaken? Perhaps the last test would prove him right. Bring out the chess set, he demanded. He and Fiona faced each other across the board. The king made his opening move. Nobody, nobody could hope to beat the leprechaun king, for he was seeped in, steeped in luck. But a person with good luck could last a little while against him. Even a person with a little bit of luck had hopes of making a few good moves. Despite the king trying his hardest to lose, Fiona was soundly beaten in two minutes. The king eyed her in amazement. You have no luck at all, he declared. But what about the milk and the eggs and the potatoes? Fiona sighed. If I fill my milk bucket with whitewash or my egg basket with pine cones or my wheelbarrow with dirty rocks, Surely that's my own business. I told you I have no luck. I didn't lie. Now I'll take my wish 
and be on my way. The king nodded slowly. Indeed, I did promise you a wish, but for exactly the value of the luck you actually had, you've proven to me that you had no luck at all. So that's all you can wish for, nothing. He smiled at the cleverness of his reasoning, all well within the limits of leprechaun law. Then his smile wavered, for Fiona was smiling too. So I can wish for nothing? She asked. He nodded, puzzled. Then I wish for a hole, Fiona continued. A hole is nothing after all, and that's exactly the value of my wish. I wish for a hole that will never go away, and I wish it to be in the lid of that chest. She pointed to the chest of luck by the king's throne. The power of a wish, rightfully earned, is not to be denied. A hole appeared in the chest and luck began, began escaping out immediately. The king howled with rage, but what could he do? He'd made a bargain and was forced to keep it. With an angry wave of his hand, Fiona whirled away. When she opened her eyes, she was back in the meadow and the sun was rising over the hills. If there was an extra sparkle to the sunshine and the grass growed greener than, greener than before, well, it was only to be expected. And that is why from that day to this, you'll always find some luck roaming around free in Ireland for the hole is still in the chest and the king must keep his promise. But as for Fiona, well, as she herself said, luck's all well and good, but myself, I'd rather depend on my wits. Thank you so much, everyone. This was Fiona's Luck by Teresa Bateman. Have a great day.